Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. Today, Rachel interviews Norma Jean Murian, a jewelry maker, about business strategies and how to use your gift to change lives. It's Rachel here from Theophany and today I'm going to be interviewing Norma who runs the Silverfish Jewellery Company and Norma works in Birmingham and she started her business in 2002 when she decided that she no longer wants to be a lecturer teaching business but actually wanted to use her hands for good and that's when she came across a silversmith who helped her learn the trade of making silver jewellery. Mm-hmm. And she started off with the symbol of the fish, which is very representative of the Christian faith. And mm-hmm. that's since then developed a full range of jewellery, including the cross and other elements as well. That, and she's got this amazing range. I've just been on her website, got the like beautiful rings and all sorts on there. So I'm just going to find out more about you, Nora, and what inspires mm-hmm. you in your creative journey. Thank so, you. Thank you. Is, Great to see you. Um, do you want to just share a little bit about your faith and your creative upbringing? Sure. So I'm uh, Norma, uh, Norma Jean Banton Moraine. I was born in Birmingham in the UK. My parents uh, came from Jamaica in the Caribbean. So I first fell in love with Jesus when I was 11 years old. We went to Sunday school not because my parents were Christians, but because um, they, you know, sent us to Sunday school on the local Sunday school van so they could have a couple of hours of peace on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I went to the local Pentecostal church and um, fell in love with Jesus there when I was 15, 11 years old. And it's been oh. kind of a roller coaster journey since. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so it's like a childhood faith. Yeah, yeah, it oh. was. Um, but then I kind of um, left, kind of left, you know, stopped going to church, as it were, when I was about 15, as a lot of people do. Um, as I say, my parents weren't Christians, so we kind of got to make our own decisions and choices. We could go, we could go, go. And then it was kind of a coming back to God when my first son was born, which was 27 years ago. Now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was baptised as an adult 27 years ago. Yeah. Oh. I was baptised as a child when I was 11, but I wanted to yeah. be baptised as an adult. I felt it, it was quite important for my own personal faith journey. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, baptism is so important, isn't it, in terms it's of amazing. Faith yeah. and sharing and sort of demonstrating who yeah, we are. Yeah, and making that public declaration yeah. that we Absol- are God and we can come to the Lord and we choose to walk with Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. so have you always been creative or is this was that something that developed later on? Yes, it was. When I started making jewellery, I... So I started in 2002 and I was working at the time as a lecturer in business at my local college. I had three children um, by then, they were quite young. And um, I was working, just working part time at my local college. Um, But I started to feel that I wanted to do something a bit more creative. Um, and I would often say, you know, I just wanted to make a a ring for my daughter when I started. I just wanted to make her a ring so she'd have something to remember me by. I mean, since then I've made thousands of of rings. So, um, but yeah, that was the first thought, just, oh, wouldn't it be nice to make a ring for my daughter? And then she'd have something to remember me by. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, that, that's kind of how it all started. 
Oh, so, so after you've had children, you started getting into creativity and it started as a personal sort of gifting journey for you before you yeah. turned it into a business. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when I first started, as I say, it was back in 2002. And that was the time I was leading a Bible study at my local church where I used to lead uh, a woman's Bible study once a week. So this was a Wednesday morning and I was doing a um, kind of a series with my woman's Bible study group on discovering God's plan for your life. Uh, I shared with the group at the time that God's plan is often like a hidden talent. It might be something creative because God is creative. Yeah. Um, and it might just be something, you know, that you've always wanted to do that you kind of get kind of buried. And I shared with the group that I'd always wanted to make jewellery. I'd really like to make, just make a ring for my daughter. Yeah. And at the end of the Bible study, I gave the woman a challenge. And I said, whatever that thing is that you've always wanted to do, that yeah. creative thing, that hidden talent, the key thing is, if it fits in with God's plan for the world, which is that everyone should hear the gospel, you know, and have a chance to be reconciled to God. Yeah. So I shared with them, yeah, I'd always wanted to make jewellery. And I threw down the challenge and I said, whatever that thing is that you've always wanted to do, we should all take a step of faith today. And then I left the Bible study thinking, mm, that went well, but, you know, what am I going to do about making jewellery today? Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I'd never made anything and I didn't know anyone who ever had. And I wasn't particularly artistic or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I did art at school, which I quite enjoyed, but then I hadn't, you know, hadn't done any since. Yeah. Uh, but that, um, that evening I went to the local college where I worked as a set of the part-time lecture in business. I got talking to another teacher, his name was Jim, and I, I just mentioned to him, you know, I don't think I really want to be teaching business forever. What I really want to do is make jewellery and work with my hands. And can you guess what he said? Yeah. Yeah, he said, I talk silversmithing. And oh. I said, I'm coming on your course. And that was it, a light switched on, and I just kind of knew... Do you know when it's one of those God moments yeah, and you just definitely. kind of know that God just spoke and you need to act on that. So I said, I'm coming on your course and I did it. It's just a 12 week evening course, but literally, yeah, I think it changed my destiny and I just literally fell in love with jewelry making. So I, I decided I was going to share the message of the Jesus fish and I, I, you know, I really felt that's what God wanted me to do, to share the gospel through this new gift. Um, so I called my company the Silver Fish Company, and uh, yeah, that's how it all started. So that was back in 2002, and this year I'm celebrating um, 20 years. Wow! Yeah. Well, so, my yeah, son, yeah, my that. son was born in 2002, so yes, 20 years. <laughs> that's a long time to be running a business. So I'm guessing because you said you spoke, you taught business studies, that must have come in help handy for you. Um, running your silverfish company yeah definitely I mean there are some business has changed a lot since I was teaching yeah. because if you can imagine back then 20 years ago we didn't have the internet or um, social media mm. and things like that it's hard to kind of remember that you know those these things are quite recent yeah. um, but there are certain fundamentals of yeah. business and marketing that really stood me in good stead I think yeah definitely yeah and, and how would you encourage our listeners who are thinking maybe about starting a business or are struggling to get their business off the ground have you got any sort of tips that you think would really sort of like you said there's some fundamental points there that could really help them I think one of the main things is to have you know for me the bible is the best business book ever yeah. It really is. There's so much good advice, um, especially in Proverbs. Um, there's a verse <coughs> that says, um, for example, in the multitude of counsellors, there's safety. So it's a good idea to get lots of advice yeah. to do our research. There's another verse in the Bible which tells us to write the vision. Yeah. you know, write the vision, make it plain, so uh, those who those who hear it can run with it. 
So writing our vision, writing our plans, doing our planning um, is really, really important. So a lot of, I think, some of the best tips for business are actually written in the Bible, the fact that we need to get lots of advice because, as I say, in the, in the multitude of counsellors, there's faith that we need to write the vision, we need to make it plain um, so that other people can run with it. Um, also in Proverbs, it says that all hard work leads to profit. Yeah. Um, so we have to work hard, we have to be enthusiastic about what, we, you know, what we're doing. Um, but for me, obviously my business is very much a ministry, so for me it's an opportunity to share my faith and I think as artists we kind of have a license to share whatever's in our hearts and for yeah. me I think because just because I was brought up in Sunday school you know it's kind of like yeah. uh, second nature I was teaching Sunday school when I was like uh, 12 yeah. <laughs> so um, it's just kind of it's just kind of inherent, I think. And, and also, I think my faith is part of my culture, which is, um, you know, which is really important. So I think as artists, we just kind of share our hearts, don't we? Well, yeah, I mean, it's about our expression, isn't it? And I think yeah. art is our tool. It's like a voice, isn't it, that we have? It is, definitely, to, yeah. We to share where we're coming from. Yeah, definitely. So I think you hit the nail on the head. I think for me, my jewellery has been my voice, um, you know, and I've been privileged to be able to do lots of exhibitions and, you know, to share on, on BBC uh, TV, on Song of Praise. Um, yeah. And it's just a huge privilege to share my faith journey with the nation I don't think that I proselyze particularly but um, you know my faith is something that excites me and ignites me and I think um, you know it's, it's like any person in love it's just you always just want to share um, that thing that um you know, that drives you and excites you. Yeah, that's amazing. So are there any specific artists or leaders that really inspire you and help you in your journey? I kind of, uh, I thought about that question actually, and um, there are many kind of well-known Christian jewellery designers um, but I so I think I, I just like to follow Christ and to kind of keep it simple and just to kind of keep my eyes on Jesus and to make sure that or to try to make sure that my life is in step with him I do associate with a lot of jewellery designers an artist and I just find art in general is um, always inspirational. I've got a really nice picture because I don't know whether you can see that one which is oh, yes. uh, yeah. of God there behind me which is about you know kind of touching heaven yeah uh, that's quite an important theme that's by an artist called Prince Nello who's a Haitian artist um, based in Haiti where I've done um, I did a mission to Haiti in, in 2011 and kind of, yeah, yeah kind of, um, you know, got really inspired by the, the culture um, of the island. So um, artwork in general, I think, um, is important to me. The pendant I'm wearing is also called Touching Heaven, by the way, which is about the meeting uh, between heaven and earth. So the gold square represents heaven and yeah. the silver circle represents the earth. Yeah, so oh, it's about so constantly living, touching heaven, and we know that there's always a tension between the two, you know, um, we live touching heaven and we live in this relationship with Christ where there's peace and there's joy and there's all of that, and then we see the tension, you know, we see death and we see destruction and we see war on earth, and 
somehow we we hold the two things in tension. Yeah, no, definitely. There's definitely a massive yeah. tension, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting that you see heaven as a square. I wonder why that is. That's because in Revelation 21, um, so uh, in Revelation 21, I'm just adjusting my computer so you can see, uh, see the pendulum. So in Revelation 21, uh, John sees the kingdom of heaven coming down from the cloud. I mentioned that most of my designs, well, pretty much all of my designs are inspired by the Bible. So John sees the kingdom of heaven coming down, and the kingdom of heaven is as long and as wide as it is high, which makes the kingdom a cube or a square. Oh, I in see. Yeah, because it's as long and as wide as it is high, which is a cube. Yeah. And um, the um, so heaven is gold because the streets of heaven. It also says that the streets of heaven are paved with gold. And the ring I'm wearing is the same story. This is called Heaven's Embrace. Uh -huh. And you'll see that the gold square covers the circle of the earth. And this is also a prayer that the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so fascinating. Now, I do think there's a lot around, I like the idea of circles and bubbles. And I feel like the spirit realm mm. is a bit like, circles and bubbles breaking through the different realms so I think it's shapes yeah. fascinating to me definitely um yeah yeah well I, I think um you know God tends to work in circles if we look at the way God has created the universe you know the the earth is a sphere and heaven and the, the planets are, are spherical yes and the molecules in our bodies kind of mirror that they're also yeah. spherical so um, the circle is, is a very spiritual uh, shape. Also, God can be um, described or pictured as a circle because he has no beginning and he has no end. And he's alpha and he's omega. omega. Um, yeah, so he has no beginning and he has no end. So the circle is actually a representation of God's nature. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot to learn from nature itself, you know, in terms of how to reflect God and his glory in our work. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's one of the privileges of being an artist, isn't it? That we can represent God visually rather Definitely. than through our words. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I was just wondering, is there anything that sort of gets you in the mood for creativity is there any lifestyle habits some people have things that they do like meditation or walking or worship I don't know if there's something that you do on a regular daily basis that really helps your mental health or your well-being as a creative mm. yeah I mean I I do read the bible every day you know every morning I meditate um I like to meditate for an hour or so, usually early, just around sunrise. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I find just around sunrise when the sun is rising and it's quiet and the darkness is receding and the light is rising, I find I feel particularly close to God at yeah. that time of the morning and I can hear his voice more clearly. Oh, and that's interesting. Yeah, and so my prayer life is more is about listening to God. I like to listen a lot. So to listen, we kind of need the quietness. Um, so I like to listen around about dawn. And obviously I try and read the Bible every day in um, my devotional time. But listening for me is the key and hearing his voice and, um, and waiting on him, you know, waiting for his response, waiting for the pictures to come. Yeah. I keep a sketchbook by my bed or, and in my handbag. So whenever God gives me um, like a vision or a picture, I do a quick sketch and hopefully I get to make um, those things. <laughs> yeah. um, you can come up with lots and lots of ideas and it's like, Lord, when am I ever going to have the time <laughs> to make all these beautiful visions that you're giving me? But 
So I just pray for more time and more uh, and some things that I see in my mind is kind of like, well, how do you actually execute this? Because we don't want to be limited by our own ability. So we should never just be limited to the things we feel we can make. But I try and ask the Lord just for more visions, more dreams, more creativity. And then when the Lord gives me a vision, you know, I then just have to kind of figure out, okay, Lord, how am I actually going to execute this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make this um, a reality. But I think being a jeweller or being an artist is a lot of it is really about um, a lifestyle of obedience. And we are, um, you know, we are exemplifying a life of obedience because whenever God gives us a picture, yeah. we have to make it a reality and for me this is kind of like building the kingdom you know every day God gives us a vision and we make it reality and this obedience needs to kind of overflow in other areas all areas of our life that okay God gives us a word or tells us to do something and we're willing to act on it and to do it so my mantra for example has always been make jewelry change lives yeah. and so after about seven years of running the, the, the silver fish company I really wanted to make jewelry change lives for other people so I started a charitable foundation and um, I started doing overseas projects um, as well as projects in the UK, which is about training disadvantaged people around the world in jewel making, to give them the skills and the tools and to help them to start their own micro enterprises. Oh, so, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So in 2011, I did a project with the Salvation Army where I trained 12 long term unemployed young people. And then in the same year, I went to Haiti. Uh, in 2010, they had a devastating earthquake where over 360,000 people died. So it was a huge privilege to go to set up a, a jewelry workshop in a hospital rehabilitation centre. Yeah. Um, and that project is actually still going. So they're making the jewelry to fund, oh, you know, fund the projects. Yeah. yeah. And then in 2012, I did two projects in India for women rescued from human trafficking. Again, giving them giving them the tools and the training and giving them the means of an income. And then in 2014 and 2016, I did two projects in Nigeria, um, again, giving them the tools and the training and really just being obedient to God and going and, uh, you know, to make you change lives. So the overseas projects have been a huge privilege. And then in, um, in 2019, I did a project, my last overseas project was in Grenada, where I trained 100 people, 88 school children and, and 12 senior citizens. So being able to go, you know, on the mission field to make joy change lives, to give people the skills and to give them, uh, show them how to do a simple business plan. So I noticed that things come full circle because I thought I'd left off teaching business, but actually now I'm yes. one of the poorest people in, in the world as to how to start their own lucrative uh, jewelry enterprise. Yeah, so, well, I, think, I think running a business is a form of being creative, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not just the pretty things, is it? It's everything that goes behind, you know, making it and selling it and building it. I mean, I think that takes a certain mindset you know and an element of creativity I yeah mean, that's amazing that you've helped all these people as well on all these you know in Haiti was it you said um, yeah that's right yeah incredible, incredible yeah. work and I think to actually share that with people and help, not only just show them how to make a piece of jewelry but to make it sustainable so that they can mm. turn it into a business is phenomenal work and I think that's amazing um so what do you think are the biggest hurdles for creatives then, you know, who are starting the creative business? I think one of the biggest hurdles is how to make your business profitable or viable and lucrative. 
you know, how do you actually make a living from this business? And I think that comes with, um, you really need to have a good business plan and a good strategy, but also I think where a lot of people fall down is on the tactical planning. So they might have a good strategy, but they don't have a tactical plan. And I think your tactical plan is your key. So your tactical plan, your strategy is, you know, what are you going to do overall and, and how are you going to um, approach your marketing? But your tactical plan is what you do every day. So if yeah. you need to make, um, you know, a thousand pounds a week, what do you do on a Monday? What do you do on a Tuesday? What do you do on a Wednesday? Yeah. So what do you do kind of every day, step by step to yeah. achieve your goal? And I think if you break it down into tactical planning, like a weekly plan and a monthly plan, you have much more of a chance of, um, you know, succeeding. So you know exactly what you're going to do every day to kind of build your, um, your business step by step. Yeah, no, that's, it's all about discipline and vision then, basically, isn't it? Being, you know, decisive in what you're going to do and then being disciplined enough to do something every day towards that plan. Yeah, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And also, I think as Christians, we need to be prayerful because, you know, there are lots of things out there that we could do. But I think being prayerful and listening to God to make sure that our good idea is a God idea. <laughs> well, that's you know? it, isn't it? Because it can all yeah. go so wrong if, you know, and sometimes it still will go wrong. And I think there's lessons in the going wrong as well, isn't there? You know? Well, well that's right. I mean, as I say, I'm pretty big on the, the Proverbs and the Bible as, as the best business guide on the market. Um, and in Proverbs, it does say, you know, cast your bread upon the water and because um, you don't know what is going to succeed, this thing or that thing. Yeah. Um, so, again, we do have to try new ideas. You know, we never know what, um, which one is going to succeed. Um, I always say to people, if we, if we believe that the idea is from God, then we owe it to God to try it, you know, to at least just take that step of faith and yeah. uh, the next step of faith. And if it doesn't work, then we can say to God, okay, Lord, at least I tried it. So, you know, I thought I heard your voice, maybe I got it wrong, but yeah. um, I kind of believe that you wanted me to do this and I took that step. Um, we have to um, build strong foundations of faith so, as I say, praying every day, getting um, positive. Um, you talked about role models, and I, I said, well, you know, I can't be very specific people, but I have, um, you know, a lot of good um, creative friends around me. I mentioned the artist, and Snow who painted the picture behind me, and I work with a lot of um, jewellers in the jewellery quarter. Yeah. Um, and so I'm inspired every day by people who are really professional, you know, who pursue excellence. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, during the lockdown, I started a new venture, which is a jewellery academy called Masterpiece Academy. And yeah. we were recently featured on Songs of Praise. So <laughs> Masterpiece Academy is really about raising up the next generation of master jewellers in the jewellery court of Birmingham. And also it's a culturally relevant uh, jewellery academy. So that is about, um, you know, it's about encouraging and championing more diversity in the, more cultural diversity in the British jewellery trade. And that's something I think is, quite close to my heart so I think business is about being obedient to God it's about taking steps of faith and it's about recognizing when we see a window of opportunity so during the COVID crisis of 2020 um, obviously I had a lot of time because my retail workshop had to be closed on government orders so 
um, and all my exhibitions were cancelled. Up to that point, I was doing about 20 exhibitions a year. So starting a jewellery academy, working with young people had always been something I wanted to do. I always thought, you know, this is something I'm going to do when I retire uh, in about, you know, maybe 10, 20 years time. And then suddenly with the COVID crisis and, and losing so many people um, to COVID, uh, made me realise that actually tomorrow is not promised. So whatever I plan to do when I retire in 10, 20 years' time, I need to do it now because mm. I might not be here um, in 10 or 20 years' time. So it was kind of a, a rude awakening. It made me realise I have to do this now. This is this is the moment to start the academy. Um and by God's grace, you know, God has opened doors for us and God is kind of building his kingdom through the work of our hands or the work of my hands, as he said he would. Um, and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity just to be a, a kingdom builder and to be a tool in God's hand. Um, Masterpiece Academy is about creating community. <laughs> Uh, Masterpiece Academy is about, sorry about that, <laughs> Masterpiece Academy is about creating community and, um, you know, and about sowing seeds of faith as well and, and just trying to, um, you know, to be the light wherever God has placed us. Um, that's, you know, that's really that's really important and it's yeah it's just a huge privilege I get to do what I love I get to make really change lives and um you know I get to see people drawn closer to God and people coming to faith because you know um because of my work I think um that's just hugely hugely encouraging especially when I do overseas missions and I work with some of the poorest people in the world and yeah. To see them find freedom in Christ and to see them come into Christ is just a huge, um, it's hugely encouraging. It's a huge privilege. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. What a privilege it is to be able to transfer our skills to other people. That's just yeah. amazing, isn't it? Um, so what up and coming projects are you excited about? <laughs> so um, I'm excited about that Masterpiece Academy. Yeah. Um, that's quite new. Um, I mentioned that I'm celebrating 20 years uh, of the Silverfish Jewelry Company. So 20 years as a jewelry designer maker this year. And Masterpiece Academy is now a year old or so around this time, celebrating yeah. one year of Masterpiece Academy. Uh, we've already trained, um, you know, on our way to training around 24 people. Yeah. in the first year so that's really really encouraging um and as I say we're building community a creative community a culturally diverse and inclusive uh community in the jewelry quarter that's hugely exciting I'm trying to work on my first book <laughs> oh book as well fantastic yeah. so I'm hoping that will be finished by the end of the year please the lord um, what title is your book called? So my book is called Refiner's Fire. Refiner's Fire, wow. Yeah, it's called Refiner's Fire and it's really just documenting my journey but um, talking about the way that God prepares us for ministry and refines us in the same way that silver and gold is, is refined and looking at those parallels. Yeah. Fantastic. And what is your favourite book at the moment? What are you reading that you're finding inspiring? So, yeah, I like reading and I'm actually reading the book of Enoch at the moment, which I find is a very, um, so it's one of the books that wasn't included in the Bible. Um, it's in the Catholic Bible, though. So. It's in the Catholic Bible and it's in the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible. So it is in um, some Bibles. And it's a very visual, visually exciting um, book. You know, Enoch is mentioned in the Bible. Um, you know, Enoch walked with God. 
And Enoch is one of the uh, people, I think there's only two people in the Bible who didn't die. And Enoch is one of them. Um, I think there's just Enoch and, Eli and Elijah who were taken, who didn't die because they were taken. Oh, wow. yeah. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. 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 So the Bible uh, tells us uh, that Enoch walked with God mm -hmm. and um, he didn't die because he was taken. So I started reading the book of Enoch because I always wondered, I wonder what walking with God really looks like you know how did Enoch actually walk with God and what did that look like and um, so Enoch was a man who had a lot of dreams and in his dreams he was always taken to heaven and in heaven he just had all these amazingly visual experiences of one soul and um, it's actually quite um, quite fascinating. So there's only a few verses in the Bible that quote Enoch, but um, the verses that do quote Enoch make me realise that it must have been a well-known book at the time. Mm. For example, it's, it's quoted in Jude, um, where it says that in the end, you know, God will come back with 10,000 of his holy ones. That's taken directly from the book of Enoch. So um, Enoch, yeah, Enoch is quoted in the Bible. So Enoch walked with God. He had a lot of dreams and visions. He was taken into heaven. And I find it fascinating because I also have a lot of dreams and visions. And a lot of my jewelry designs come in dreams or, or visions. I suppose most art, we have to have a vision, don't we, in our mind? Yeah, and we have to be connected, we make don't that. We? Yeah, we make that a reality. So everything obviously starts with a vision. Oh, and yes, yeah. um, yeah, so I find that quite fascinating at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so how can our listeners connect with you, Norma? Okay, so um, obviously, please do visit my website, browse and buy online at www.silverfishjewelry.co.uk. That's silverfishjewelry.co.uk. Um, if you want to know more about the Jewelry Academy, if you're interested in learning jewellery, um, we have a website for the Academy, which is called masterpieceacademy.co.uk. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'd just like to pray with you before we finish. Yes, please do. That's or you can also uh, call us um, 0121 554 That's 0121 554 and again, it's um, silverfishjewelry.co.uk. Fantastic. Well, that's really good. And I'm actually wearing some of Norma's jewellery. Yes, you like, are. I, I've known of yours, your jewellery for quite a long time. Oh, uh, And I like the simplicity of it. Mm. And it's very modern, which is what I like. I like modern, simple lines. Yeah. And I like white gold. And so silver sort of matches my white gold. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's lovely because... I'm not really into lots of bling, so it's nice to come across jewellery that's, you know, quite contemporary. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the clean lines and the elegant, elegant simplicity are features of my work because I think the gospel is simple and I'm trying to kind of portray that in the way that the work is designed. The one that you're wearing was one of my uh, early designs. It's called Extreme Love. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's about seeing the cross uh, kind of as a kiss of love. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and that's a beautiful image, I think, that, you know, that lovely verse from John 16 that God so yeah. loves the world and gave his only son, you know, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So, yeah, the cross is definitely. A kiss of love, and the Bible is all about God's oh. extreme love, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Well, I'm just going to pray for you right now, and it's Thank been you. absolutely wonderful to connect with you and find out more about what inspires you, and some amazing business tips in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, I'll just pray for you right now, Norma. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Oh, Father God, we just thank you so much for Norma and mm -hmm. her amazing talents with her jewellery. 
We thank you, God, that you speak to her through visions and dreams. I pray, God, that you'll meet with her more and more in the morning when she rises with you. We just pray for her academy that she's setting up, that the people that she educates will be touched by your spirit and will be blessed in their work. And for all the charitable organisations and movements that she's been working with, God, that you continue to bless those and move you know, supernaturally through those ministries. And we just thank you again for this lovely jewellery that you've bestowed in Norma and obviously on myself, now that I'm wearing it. Um, we just pray for protection over her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Dr. No problem at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today. To see the resources mentioned in the episode, you can head over to theophanymedia.com forward slash Norma. To support the show and join our patron community, where you'll get extra access and exclusive content, visit us at patreon.com forward slash Creatively Christian. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Dave Ebert, and Rachel Anna. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer did our music. And Jake Doberins produces and edits the show.